So today I'm going to show you how you can make your own heating pads uh, not for really high temperatures but um, certainly good for uh, maybe keeping yourself warm like for example uh, under a jacket or in this case I'm going to be using it for warming my LifePool 4 batteries when the temperatures get uh, really low and this is the first one that I made and the problem with it is that the nichrome wire is pretty far apart it doesn't really give an even heat but it was sort of like a proof of concept to see if this method would actually work uh, and it's just it's pretty simple to make and it just basically consists of sandwiching the nichrome wire between duct tape essentially uh, but I had a problem when I was preparing the nichrome wire it snapped so I joined it back together and that's always been a hot spot there and it's slightly and it's melted a hole there uh, but the first thing we need to do before we make this is to prepare the nichrome wire and I'll show you how to do that now because the problem with the nichrome wire is um, it's very difficult to work with when it's new see um, if you take off the spool it just sort of holds an awkward shape that's a bit difficult to work with so uh, I'll get it straightened out Okay, so the wire that we're using is 0.5 millimeter, and uh, the stuff I was using was 0.25 in the last element. So to straighten it, we've got um, two screws here connected up to a 12 volt battery. So, um, and basically all we're going to do is touch the wire against that to heat it up, and uh, that will straighten it. So. Um, I'll just grab myself a pair of pliers just to hold that, um, hold one end. You don't want to heat it up straight to the end though because it puts an oxide layer on it which would make getting a connection difficult. So we simply just put, touch it like this and it'll heat up. Don't let it get too hot or it'll snap. Then it straightens out. And we're just trying to get um, as straight as we can. There we go, and we do that for the entire length of the wire, and uh, don't uh, roll it up again once you're done. Uh, you can just, what you can do is you can just uh, sort of just trail it behind you to wherever you're needing it, or um, just uh, keep it off the reel because it'll, you'll just uh, coil it up again. There we go, and that's how you straighten up the nichrome wire. Then we end up with really nice straight wire that we can work with easily. So we're getting on okay, it's just sort of um, piling up to the side. But yeah, you can sort of just uh, pull it through like this, and that gets it straightened out really nicely. But there's 15 metres here, so I've got a lot to go. Okay, so the stuff I'm using is 0.5 millimetre thickness. Uh, it's all straightened out now. And that has 5.551 ohms per metre. So I'm needing about 5 metres of it. I'm going to be making a 10 watt heating element, 10 watt heating pad for 24 volts. So um, I've if you wanted to use something for 12 volts, you'd probably have to use thicker nichrome maybe, or just a shorter length. But then using a shorter length, you have to sort of space it out more and it's not getting an even heat. So it'd be better to use a, a really long length of something a bit thicker. But then you run into the problem of it not being all that flexible. Or you could just wire parallel strands and there's lots of ways you can do it. So we'll just start by this is the exact size I need to make, so I just need to make another one of these. So we need to start by laying out some tape upside down. 
Okay, so change of plan. I've actually got this uh, sticky back plastic stuff. I'm going to try and sandwich it between this. Uh, so, just need to shut this window just now. Stop it from blowing out the window. So the backing of that just comes off like this. And that's good, it's sticking to the surface really well. I thought that would uh, all just curl up. And then what we do is we just need to lay the nitro wire onto this. Uh, it could be quite difficult to start with. Uh, we just want to uh, try and sort of get it to stick to the plastic, which it does do mostly. Just getting it started could be a real pain. And then we have our tail coming up there. This is where we're going to attach the power cable. Uh, then you can just flatten it down with your fingernail. Try and also do this with very clean hands as well because if you get grease or whatever on the nichrome, it's just not going to stick properly. So this one can do if we moved over. I want to have have these very close together and this material is fine for this because it's not going to be operating at a very high temperature at all probably not even 40 degrees celsius i'm only going to be using it to keep the batteries above five degrees celsius anyway but uh, we just need to repeat that and sort of hold it like that and then you can sort of pull the wire down and then you just kind of bend it at the end those end bits could be quite tricky I suppose but uh, yeah, you get the idea, you just want to make uh, a pattern like that and just keep on going. And uh, probably while you're at it, a good idea would be on the parts you've done, you could just maybe put extra tape over those just to stop them from unravelling. Uh, so I could put a piece here, I think that would do. And that will stick down really, really securely and probably will never come off again. And that's quite nice. It, this, the wire is sandwiching in between there really nicely, so uh, I think it's going to work okay. So now it's time to attach the power cables and I just used refrigeration capillary tube and just cut it a little bit so um, I'm just making crimps out of that really uh, and I'm just going to use this silicon wire uh, as a power cables and just strip a little bit off there and we'll simply just uh, crimp these on using pliers. So a good tip is always just to make sure you clean the wire if it's got any oxide on it before you crimp it or you could create a spot of high resistance which will just overheat. What you do to crimp it is just use the part normally used for cutting but just don't, uh, don't press so hard. Because you also don't want to cut through it, you just want to crimp it. There we go, and we end up with a nice crimped connection using my homemade uh, sort of butt crimps, they're called. So now what I'm doing at this stage is I'm just going to put extra tape where the power connector is. So I'm just covering that with duct tape here. 
Just make sure that these stay a bit more secure. So I've got a 36 volt power supply here. I'm just using 36 volts so I can be sure that it is actually working. I'm just feeling for heat basically. Yeah, and that's working, it's, it's warming up okay, so um, that should be fine. Now it's got twice the length of wire that the old heating element had on it, but the wire is also um, thicker too, so it should draw about the same amount of power. I don't have a watt meter handy just now. Right, so now the next step is to put the top layer on. And you probably want to make, if you're actually using this light to say warm up a jacket or a chair, um, so something's going to sort of have some rough use then, you probably wouldn't make it like this, but this is just going to be spreading its life on the bottom of a battery tray. So that's not really, it's not going to be exposed to any sort of movement. Got a battery sitting on top of it, on top of it for a few years. So I'm just trying to separate this here. I'm going to try and get that laid on top. It's not going to be too easy. Well, that's that laid on top. Just flattening it out now. I should hopefully end up with a heating element that looks not too bad. And more importantly, performs well too. So. That looks okay. Um, I just need to fold this edge over. Probably won't stay really, because um, when you have a very short, um, very short amount, it doesn't really stick over well. So um, you can probably just try and stick it over, then iron it afterwards. Like maybe iron it between two towels, and that will uh, make it all stick together really well. But uh, I'm not going to do that because I don't have an iron of my own. So that is it now, uh, completed, and. It's on just now and it's uh, it is pretty nice and warm. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll get a watt meter and we'll see how much power it draws at different voltages. Okay, so uh, so we'll try on uh, just 12 volts first. 12.95 to be exact. Uh, let's see how much power that draws. So. Yeah, we only get 4.2 watts on that, so that'll also not really be enough to heat up the battery bank. Uh, so I'll now go over to 20, 24 volts. Just adjusting the power supply to sort of uh, my typical voltage. Uh, it's at about 25 just now. And you get 15, 15 watts on that. So uh, that's that's reasonably good. That should that should do. If that's running for uh, several hours when the temperature starts getting low, it should be able to heat the batteries up. It will do it very slowly, but it would I would never allow them to get to freezing temperatures. So I'd imagine that should be fine. Uh, and now it will just go up to about 48 volts. That's uh, 56 watts.